Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ngayon po ay ating tatalakayin ang basic biosecurity protocols for swine and poultry farms. Why do we need to establish good biosecurity measures? Of course, it is to protect the health of our flock or herd. We need to keep them healthy and a healthy animal basically means that the tissues and organs are functioning normally and in harmony with each other with its environment. So there are several techniques to qualify or quickly assess the health of the animals for production purposes. Some of these are chick quality scoring, body condition scoring, back fat measurement, weight and feed intake monitoring, and mortality and morbidity monitoring. Kailangan natin itong tutukan para malaman natin kung ano ang normal bago natin alamin kung ano ba ang senyales ng mga alaga natin na may sakit. So, the first general signs of disease is fever. Ang normal body temperature ng swine ay 38.7 to 39.8 degrees Celsius. Whereas sa uh, poultry naman ay 40 to 43 degrees Celsius. Second is inappetence or kawalan ng ganang kumain. Kadalasan natin itong makikita as drop in feed intake. Next is diarrhea or wet droppings or pagtatae, cough and cold, at weight loss. So, how microorganisms spread? There are several ways on how disease can be transmitted. First is direct contact through droplets or airborne. Second is indirect contact through vectors like ticks, fleas, mosquitoes, flies, etc. And through fomites like cars, trucks, clothes, shoes, or even feet. The sources of contamination can be blood, tissues, secretions, and excretions of sick or dead animals. Carrier animals and for example, the ASF virus, which can persist in pork meat or even uh, fecal matter for several months to years. For example, ASF can be easily killed by heat treatment, but can survive in frozen meat for 1,000 days or 3 years. Uh, we have actually been practicing biosecurity in our own homes recently using face masks, face shields, or even putting foot leaves outside of our doors. So, let's review how biosecurity management should be implemented efficiently in our own farms. Why should we apply advanced biosecurity? First, it is the only proven way to stop entry of pathogenic organisms. It is not limited to ASF virus, but also include all known diseases in swine farms, like PRRS, hog cholera, APP, mycoplasma, Ogestes, or PED, and in poultry farms like NB, ILT, IB, Coryza, and etc. This is how we can control the spread of deadly diseases. And number one, sanitation is the priority. So what should be the first step? The first step is planning. Biosecurity is not only about cleaning and disinfecting, and we need to identify the critical control points on where we need to intercept the entry of diseases. So these are the main control points that we need to safeguard. First, transport of animals, source of stock, personnel movement, delivery of farm equipment, Control of entry of pests or other animals and waste management. Part of planning is the system flow design. Just a simple one-way flow is sufficient in controlling entry of diseases. This is how it works. First, we need to build a physical barrier which will separate the clean and the dirty areas. The dirty area is the part exposed or with direct contact with the outside of the farm. 
Ito yung area na malapit sa marking pens, offices, or parking areas. Whereas the clean area is the part in contact with the production area. The flow should be one way. From the outside of the farm, we need to disinfect our clothes and shoes, leave the unnecessary stuff in the lockers, remove outside clothes, and then take a shower. Then after, after then, we can go to the clean area, use the clothes provided by the farm, disinfect newly clean boots, then proceed to the production area. One of the major parts of biosecurity is choosing proper disinfectant to use. Let me show you the most common disinfectants in the market. And uh, one proper way to handle this is to always follow the manufacturer's guide or manufacturer's instructions. So the first one is formaldehyde or formalin. It is a broad spectrum water-based solution. It can inactivate ASM virus with 3 parts per thousand formalin solution for 30 minutes. Most often used against ASF virus as vapor for disinfecting electrical devices. It is also highly toxic to humans. Second is the glutaraldehyde, also broad spectrum, works most strongly at pH 7.5 plus minus 0.85. It is less corrosive to metals, rubbers, and plastics, but is also highly toxic to humans. Third is sodium hypochlorite or bleach and calcium hypochlorite or bleach powder. It is widely used to, uh, for hard surface disinfection, also broad spectrum, ASF virus inactivated with 0.03% to 0.5% chlorine solution for 30 minutes, relatively low residual toxicity, corrosive to metals, Efficacy rapidly reduced with organic matter like feces or leftover feeds. Effectiveness diminished with extended storage. Fourth is iodine compounds. It is stable in storage, less toxic to humans, corrosive to metals, can inactivate ASF virus at 2-3% iodine compound solution for 30 minutes, but efficacy rapidly reduced with the presence of organic matter. So next is calcium hydroxide or lime. It is also widely used in livestock production, including treatment of slurries and wastewater treatments. ASF virus inactivated with 1% calcium hydroxide for 3 minutes or 0.5% calcium hydroxide for 30 minutes. Apply on the ground or floor of the barns to be visible white. In case of disease outbreak, apply sufficient amount of 1 kg per square meter. It is easy to obtain and easy to apply, but it requires long contact time and moisture, so frequent application is required when used outdoor. So next type is sodium hydroxide or caustic soda. It is the strongest viricidal agent. It can inactivate ASF virus with 8 parts per thousand sodium hydroxide for 30 minutes or with 1% sodium hydroxide for 3 minutes or 0.4% sodium hydroxide for 30 minutes. It is also effective in the presence of organic material, though it is highly dangerous and needs special caution when handling. So next is quaternary ammonium compounds or quarks. These are commonly used in ordinary environmental sanitation. These are generally low toxic, but also prolonged contact can irritate skin and the respiratory tract. It is also effective for enveloped viruses like ASF virus and can also be inactivated with organic matter. So another type is phenol. The effect is enhanced with EDTA and warm temperature. It is bacterial static at concentrations of 0.1 to 1% and it is bactericidal and fungicidal at 1 to 2%. It can inactivate ASF virus with 3% 
or the phenylphenol for 30 minutes. The effect is decreased by an alkaline medium. Repeats, soaps, and low temperatures, but it is more active in the presence of organic material than other disinfectants. Gresol has lower toxicity and stronger disinfecting activity than phenols. So, next type is the multi-constituent compounds or it is just the combination of different disinfectants discussed earlier and it should be applied according to the product instructions. So, the choice of disinfectants to be used also depends on the classification and purpose. Like for example, for food baths, we can use quax, hypochlorites, lime, or any other disinfectants. For vehicles like spraying, we can use quax, glutaraldehyde, or multi-constituents. For animal housing or in cages through spraying, we can use quax, glutaraldehyde, sodium hypochlorite, multi-constituents, or any other disinfectants. Just note that possible corrosion should be considered. For entrance of the premise or areas around animal housing, we can use lime. For electrical equipment through gas form, we can use formaldehyde. And for clothing, we can use sodium hypochlorite or calcium hypochlorite or so-called bleach, multi-constituents, phenols, or any other disinfectants that will not cause stains. So another critical control point is knowing when to properly apply the disinfectants. So how can we destroy the pathogens? First, proper selection of disinfectant should be considered and also it's readily if it is readily available in the region. Always wear protective gears when handling strong chemicals. And clean the surface properly. When we went clean, we should be manually removing organic matter first. Wash the surface with water, lather with detergent, leave the lather for at least 30 minutes or until bubbles subside, and then rinse thoroughly with water. Next is Apply the disinfectant with recommended dilution and then leave the disinfectant within the recommended contact time. So we do it properly because most disinfectants can be deactivated by organic matter such as food, feces, soil, and etc. So let's run down on how to disinfect the trucks and buildings. So first, we need to dry clean the area. We need to dry our manual clean area, always wear protective clothes and boots, sweep the area starting from top, sides, and then bottom, clean the wheels, mud guards, and the exposed part of the chassis. Second is, prepare the disinfectant according to the manufacturer's guide. The third step is using high-pressure water or and detergent application. This is basically trying to dissolve hardened residues through soaking. So for the cleaning of the area using high-pressure wash from top, sides, then bottom, applying detergent, leaving it for at least 10 to 30 minutes, and then rinsing it completely. So after this, inspect the whole area if everything is thoroughly cleaned. Then the last step is applying the disinfectant of choice. Always use protective gears. So we should start disinfecting on the outside and then work towards the inside. Make sure you also clean the cab, including the floor mats, pedals, and any surface that can be touched. So no need to use for detergents. Just a efficient manual cleaning plus disinfectant is sufficient. After this, make sure to disinfect use protective gears 
for next use.